社長、すいません。今日、田中さんが仕事休むって言っています。あれ、姉ちゃんどこ今、友達の家に行ってるよ。おい、アイン、宿題やったかもうやってるよ。日本では毎日人が約3000人死んでいます。What are? お前はもう、死んでいる。It seems like many foreign learners they don't understand this tail form of a verb.What does tail actually do to a verb? When you change a verb into tail form, what exactly changes? What is the function of this tail? Today I'm going to talk about this tail. What does tail do to a verb? Tail allows verb to describe a state of something, just like adjective. Usually, verb doesn't describe a state. Verb states someone does something or something happens. For example, The verb nureru means wet. But in English, wet is adjective. But in Japanese, nureru is a verb. So in English, you can say, my shirt is wet. But in Japanese, you cannot say, watashi no shatsu wa nuremasu. You cannot say that because the verb nureru means the change that occurs to the shirt that was used to be dry became wet. That is the meaning of nureru. So if I say, Watashi no shatsu wa nuremashita, that means my shirt was originally dry, that became wet. So that nuremashita means the change that occurred in the past, that my shirt used to be dry, became wet. But nureru cannot describe the state of wet itself. My shirt is wet now. If I want to say my shirt is wet now, you cannot use nureru to describe my shirt because in Japanese, the verb is not used to describe a state. The verb states the change that occurs. So if you want to describe your shirt is wet, what should you do? Okay, if you want to use verb to describe a state of something, You use tail form. Tail form describes a state of something. So you can say, Watashi no shatsu wa nurete imasu. So you can use this nurete imasu just like English adjective wet. So simply saying, if you make a verb into tail form, you kind of make the verb into adjective. It describes a state of something. Let's cite another example. I say, 私のシャツは乾きました。That means my shirt dried. In English, the word dry can be used as adjective at the same time, also can be used as verb. So you can say my shirt is dry, or you can also say my shirt dried. But in Japanese, the word kawaku only can be used as verb. So you cannot use the verb. Kawaku to describe a state of dryness. You cannot say, Watashi no shatsu wa kawakimasu. No. That means my shirt is going to be dry. That's not what I want to say. I want to say my shirt is dry. How do you do that? You can do that by using this tail form. You can say, Watashi no shatsu wa kawaite imasu to describe the state of your shirt that is dry. So basically, what does this teiru do e s to a verb? Teiru makes a verb into something like adjective, something that describes a state of something. But there's one thing you need to remember teiru d e s c r i b e two types of state. One type is progressive state, the other type is resultative state. So, what does this progressive state mean? s This progressive state also can be divided into two types. One is something that is happening right now, or something that someone is doing right now, right at this moment. So I can say, Watashi wa ima hanashite imasu, because I'm speaking right now, right at this moment. I can use teiru to describe the state of myself right now. I'm speaking right now. Watashi wa hanashite imasu. 私は頭をかいています。私は怒っています。Yeah, so, tail can describe something that you are doing right now. 
Also, it can describe something that is happening right now. Ima ame ga futte imasu means it is raining outside right now. Ima kaze ga fuite imasu. Wind is blowing right now at this moment. So you can use teiru to describe a progressive state that is happening right now. What about the other progressive state? The other progressive state teiru can describe is a state that has been happening that someone has been doing for a period of time. For example, I can say watashi wa eigo wo san nenkan benkyou shite That means I have been studying English for three years. So I may not be studying right at this moment, but what I mean by that is for three years from the past until now, I regularly study English. I've been studying English regularly. So you can also use teiru to describe something that you have been doing for a period of time regularly. Watashi mai asa 10 kilo hashite imasu. You can also describe a phenomenon. For example, 3日間雨がずっと降っています. What if I make it past tense? For example, 先週1週間ずっと雪が降っていました. If I made it past tense, that means it had been snowing for a week. But now, it is not snowing anymore. The difference is, if I say 雪が降っています, which means it has been snowing until now and it is snowing right now as, as well. But if I say 雪が降っていました, I'm describing something happened in the past. So it had been snowing for a week. But now it is not snowing. That is the difference. So in Japanese, this teiru form also can describe a state that happens regularly for a period of time. Every day, 3,000 people died in Japan. That 3,000 people die thingy has been happening from the past until now. If I say, 地震が発生しています can have two meanings. One is, earthquake is happening right now. The other meaning is that earthquake has been happening for a period of time. So if you want to know, oh, how can I know this teiru form means something that is happening right now or something that has been happening for a period of time. Usually, we use adverb to differentiate the two. If I just say, Chichi wa shochu wo nonde My dad is drinking shochu right at this moment. Also can mean that my dad has been drinking shochu for a period of time. So to differentiate the two, we use adverb. Chichi wa ima shochu wo nonde Means my dad is drinking shochu right now. But if I say, Chichi wa mainichi shochu wo nonde That means my dad is drinking shochu every day. So that is something that he has been doing for a pe period of time every day. So one thing you, to, you need to remember is when Teiru describe progressive states, there are two types. First is something that is happening at the moment. The other one is something that has been happening for a period of time. Then what about the resultative state? What is resultative state? A resultative state is a state that was brought about by an action or by a phenomenon. For example, this paper here, right? I'm tearing it off. Oh, right, I'm tearing its progressive state. I'm tearing a paper. But what about after I finish tearing? Oh, this is resultative state. That has happened as a result of my action, tearing. So I can say, Kono kami wa yaburete imasu. Yabureru is intransitive verb. I can use this paper as subject. Kono kami wa yaburete imasu. That means this paper is already in the state of being torn. Say, well, it's empty bottle. Say, if it's not empty, if I'm drinking right now, I can say, Watashi wa mizu wo nonde I'm drinking right now. It's progressive state. 
but also I can say after finish drinking it. Watashi wa kono mizu o nondeimasu. That means I'm already in a state of finish drinking this water. Mo kono mizu o nondeimasu. I have drunk the water. See, this cup is not broken. But say if I broke it. Okay, it's broken. So if it's broken, I can say kono koppu wa warete imasu. Because as a result of being broken, this cup became a state of already broken. So if I want to describe a broken cup, I can say, Kono koppu wa warete imasu. If my phone is broken, I want to describe the state, oh, my phone is broken, already broken. I can say, Kono keitai wa koarete imasu. Koareru is something get broken. So if I say, Kono keitai wa koare mashita, that means my phone got broken in the past. So this phenomenon of broken had happened in the past. Kono keitai wa koare mashita. But if I say, Kono keitai wa koarete imasu, I'm describing just like adjective. Describing the state of this phone that is already broken. So that is the meaning of resultative state. If I say, Tanaka san wa kekkon shimashita, that means Tanaka san got married. So got married means he used to be unmarried, but from one point he g e t married. So this verb, kekkon shimashita, means the change that occurred to him. He was unmarried. But from one point he g e t married, the state changed. So if I want to describe the state of Tanaka san, he is a married person. He is a person who is already married. So I want to describe him. I'm not talking about what he did in the past. He got married in the past. No, I'm describing the state of him who is already married. In that case, I'm gonna use teiru to describe him. Kare wa 結婚しています。I can cite more examples so that you can have more clear idea about this. For example, if I say, 怪我をしました means I got injured. That means in the past, I wasn't injured, but I became an injured person in the past. But if I want to describe the state of myself, I'm a person who is already injured. In that situation, you can say, 私は怪我をしています Or you can say, other person, 彼は怪我をしています。That means I'm describing state of him. He's in state of injured. So he's an injured person. If he recovered from it, I can say, 彼の怪我は治りました。Means he got recovered. But if I say, 彼の怪我は治っています。That means he's already in a state of recovered. Because once you get recovered from an injury, The state of recovery lasts until you get injured again. Another example. If you want to ask someone, do you remember? You don't say, Oboe masu ka? Oboe masu is you start to remember or you learn something. So, kare o oboe masu, that means I start remembering you. I don't know you yet, but from now on, I'm gonna remember you. That is the meaning of anata o oboemasu. But if I want to say, I remember you in English sense, you will say, anata o oboe teimasu. Because what I'm saying is that it's not that now I remember you. That means I have known you for a period of time. Not only now I know, no, I have been knowing about you for a period of time from the past. So, I'm describing state of myself. I remember you using anata o oboe teimasu. I don't remember you. Anata o oboe teimasen. If I say anata o oboe masen, that means like I don't get to remember you. I don't learn you. I wouldn't get to know you. Stuff like this. So it's weird. If I say I don't remember you, because remembering. Is a process that once you remember, you keep remembering, right? So, this is resultative state. So, I would use kare o oboe teimasu. 
彼を覚えていません。To say, I remember him. I don't remember him. Same reason if you want to say, I know you. You don't say, あなたを知ります。あなたを知ります is, I will get to know you. 知る means, I didn't know before, but now I know you. That's the meaning of 知る。So, あなたを知ります。Oh, I get to know you. But if I want to say I know you in English sense, I will use 私はあなたを知っています。Because know is a resultative state. Once I got to know you, I know you until I forget you, right? But there's one thing you need to remember about this verb, 知る。When you want to say I know you, I know something, you got to use ている form. 知っています。彼を知っています。But when you use in negative form, you don't use 知っていません。We don't use 知っていない、知っていません。If you are using the negative form, we just say 知らない、知りません。This thing you need to remember. When you say I know something, you say 知っている。But if you say I don't know something, you say 知りません、知らない。Don't use ている negative form. I want to ask you, did you do the homework? There are two ways to ask you. 宿題をやりましたか宿題をやっていますか The difference is, やりましたか is asking you if you did the homework. If I say, 宿題をやっていますか I'm asking your state. Are you already in a state of having done the homework? So I want to ask you out. But I wonder, have you done your homework? So I want to know your state. Are you already a free person? Are you already a person who has already done homework? In that situation, I can ask you like, もう宿題をやっていますか To ask you, are you already a person who has done a homework? So there is subtle differences in the nuance between 宿題をやりましたか and 宿題をやっていますか You can also use Taylor like this. For example, My mom went to Tokyo and she hasn't come back yet. In this situation, I can say, 母は東京に行っています If a friend of mine came to my place and he is still here, he hasn't gone back to his place yet. In this situation, I can say, 友達が来ています友達がうちに来ています Means, my friend came here and he is still here. There's also one usage of teiru often confuses people. That is, itteiru. Let's compare these three sentences. Tanaka san wa kyo shigoto o yasumu to iimashita. Tanaka san wa kyo shigoto o yasumu to itteimasu. Tanaka san wa kyo shigoto o yasumu to itteimashita. What is difference among three sentences? There is difference. The first sentence, Tanaka san wa kyo shigoto o yasumu to iimashita. That means I'm stating the fact that he said that he's gonna take a day off today. I'm stating that he said that. The fact that he said that. He said that he's taking a day off today. But if I say, Tanaka san wa kyo shigoto o yasumu to itteimasu. That means state of that he said he's taking a day off still. Continuing. What does that mean? Mean he said that he's taking a day off, but no one had answered yet. Maybe he said, I want to take a day off today, but his boss h a v e not answered him yet. He is saying that he wants to take a day off, but this matter is not settled. No one has yet g a v e him an answer. So he is still waiting for the answer. This thing is not settled. Tanaka san wa kyo shigoto o yasumu to itte imasu. Maybe boss gonna say, no, no way. So when you use itte imasu, that put emphasize that this matter is not settled. The person still haven't got any answer. So for example, I'm planning to go to camping with friends. And another friend called me. Oh, what's up? What are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm planning to go to camping with my friends. Oh, Can I come? Well, I need to ask my friends. In this situation, well, I'm gonna ask my friends if the person who called me can come with us. 
So I can say, well, say this if this person who called me is Tanaka, I can say, Tanaka san ga issho ni kitai to itte imasu. I tell them by saying itte imasu because we still don't know he can come or not. This matter has not been settled. I haven't given him the answer. So, oh, he's saying that he wants to come with us. What do you guys think? In this situation, I'm gonna say, Tanaka san ga kitai to itte imasu. Because the matter is not settled. So, what about if I say, Tanaka san wa kyo shigoto yasumu to itte imashita? Itte imashita is used to report some comment, some message to someone else. Tanaka said to me, and I'm conveying what he said to other person. He said that he's taking a day off today. I'm conveying the message to other people. If, for example, Tanaka said, Kimura is an asshole. I tell Kimura what Tanaka had said. Hey, Kimura, Tanaka said that you're an asshole. In this kind of situation, I convey what Tanaka had said to Kimura. Oh, Tanaka said that you're an asshole. In this case, I'm gonna use itte imashita to tell Kimura. Tanaka san ga Kimura san wa kuso yaro da to itte imashita yo. So, this te imashita is used to convey information, convey something that someone had said to other person. You can use that to report what someone had said. Kore ga teiru kei desu. Mina san wakarimashita ka? Likai dekimashita ka? Hontou ni wakatte imasu ka? Likai shimashita ka is like, did you understand? Wakatte imasu ka is are you already in the state of understanding it? Well, you don't say that in English, but that kind of feeling. It is hard to get these subtle feelings that this teiru conveys. But if you know this fundamental, basic function of teiru, it will help you to understand that subtle nuance. 